This video is continuing right where the previous video left off. We are in part 060, Logic Control, and we're moving on to this Naval Academy example. Uh, I don't remember exactly where I acquired this example. I believe it comes from MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition, but I could be wrong about that. The basic idea of this example is that uh, applicants for the Naval Academy have to be at least five foot six inches tall. Now, I don't know if that is true today or was true in the past, but that's what we're gonna go with. And then we have a list of heights of applicants in inches, and we're gonna try and write MATLAB code to determine which of our applicants are eligible and which are not. You can sort of imagine generalizing this to any sort of thing where you've got a bunch of data and you're trying to find a subset of that data that meets a particular criteria. All right, so let me run this first section here. Okay, there we can see our vector of heights and which of those are greater than 66 inches, which is five foot six. The trues are where it's greater, zeros are where it's not greater. And then we wanna find the positions of those trues, the index. So index two, four, five, six, and seven. Index two, four, five, six, and seven. And then what are the heights that are tall enough? Only those heights. Let's get rid of the 63 and the 65. Well, there are those heights right there. Let's see how I did that in the code. All right, so there's my vector of heights. I display that out. And I can simply display out, if I want ones and zeros, height greater than or equal to 66. And then if I wanna know the indexes or positions of those applicants with height greater than or equal to 66, I could say find parentheses, height greater than or equal to 66. And so now I have this vector right here, except that has these values highlighted on the right side. And what's useful about that is that then I can use that vector except to index into my height vector. I can say, okay, from the height vector, row one, columns, except, give me all the resulting values, all the corresponding values, and I get them right here. Now, I don't even really need the one because it is a vector. There are no other rows, so I don't need to say one, and this would also work perfectly. It occurs to me that height is actually a bad variable name, and the reason height is a bad variable name is because height is also the name of a function in MATLAB. If I clear out my workspace, I make some new matrix just with a couple values here, and then I ask for the height of that matrix, well, that's a function that's calculating that there are two rows in this matrix. However, if I run this section again, height now is a vector of values. If I try and go back and ask for the height of matrix A, well, now I get something wildly different because what's happening is matrix A is being used to index into my height vector and give me this other alternative thing. So that's actually a bad variable name. I wouldn't recommend that. Could have just made it plural, heights, since it's a bunch of heights, or there's other alternatives that we could have used. All right, now let's get who is declined from the Naval Academy. All right, so I run this section right here, and I'm finding the heights that are less than 66, and those values are at index one and three, so first and third applicants. And finally, I'm gonna display out all my accepted applicants using an fprintf, so this will be a little fprintf review. So all the candidates that meet the height requirement, candidate number two, who is this tall, candidate number four, this tall, and so on. And the way I did that was I created a matrix right here where the first row is the vector of accept indexes, and the second row is a vector of heights, using the height vector and indexing into it with those accept positions. There's kind of a lot going on right here. Finally, my fprintf, which unfortunately scrolls off the page, but we have a placeholder for a four wide uh, zero decimal place floating point value, and then another placeholder for a four spaces wide integer, and then I'm putting in the matrix so that the values from the matrix will be substituted into these two positions. I don't know why I did this, but I do it repeatedly in this document for some reason. This right here, I mean, it might as well just be an integer because it's asking for zero decimal places. So let's just change that into a percent four D and that makes probably a little bit more sense. But now let's add some complexity to our Naval Academy example and suppose that there's an age requirement where applicants have to be between the ages of, I believe 18 and 35 inclusive. Now, again, I have no idea if this ever did or still does apply to the Naval Academy, but we're gonna go with it anyway. So here is our new list of applicant data. We've got their heights in the first column and their ages in the second column. Don't worry too much about this exceedingly tall 12-year-old right here. Uh, they're not going to be admitted into the academy. 
And again, the purpose of this is a demonstration of how you might use MATLAB code to select a subset of your overall data that meets various criteria. Criterion? I forget what the plural of criteria is. Moving onward. Let's run this section here. All right, so there are our applicants again, and let's see who's tall enough. Well, the first and third is not tall enough, as we saw before. And the way I got this result right here was setting a variable named result equal to the applicant's data, all the rows, but only column one, and those values that are greater than or equal to 66. Okay, and then we wanna go through a successive filtering process. So we wanna see who's tall enough and old enough. So combining that line of code with this line of code right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my current result, the current true and false values, and I'm gonna say, and also, and the applicants in column two, so the age column, that are greater than or equal to 18, those who are old enough. And I'm gonna get this new vector right here that has gotten rid of our 12 year old, our very tall 12 year old at the bottom right there. And then scrolling slightly further down, I'm gonna then again say result and, so my previous true false values, and also the applicants in that second column where they have an age less than or equal to 35. The ones indicate here the applicants who are acceptable in terms of height and age. And notice how I did this. I kept setting result equal to its previous or current value, you might say, and this new criteria that we're trying to evaluate. Now, all of this, other than the displaying, could have been done on just this one line of code right here. Well, one line split into three using the dot, dot, dots. And I do think this is probably easier to read, but I also wanted to show it split up. So here's where we check, you know, the height column, 66, and the age greater than or equal to 18, and the age less than or equal to 35. And then I run those results, the true falses, through the find function to get the numeric value, the indexes of who passes, who is uh, going to be allowed to be even eligible. And that's individual two, four, and six. And then if I want to grab their data, what I can do is I can create a matrix like this, where these are the people who pass, the indexes of the people who pass, comma, so the next column, from applicants, only the rows of people who pass, column one, to get their heights, and then, comma, next column, only further applicants, the rows where they pass, column two, to get their ages. And that produces for me this matrix right here. And that's a nice way of displaying it out. It's column oriented. However, if we want our fprintf to also display out column oriented, we actually need to transpose it. And the reason for that is the fprintf substitutions into the placeholder locations is going to read down the columns. And if we did it without transposing, it would read in two, four, six, rather than two, four, six. So we have to be a little bit careful about that. So in my code, I transpose temp back into a results variable, and then I have my fprintf that displays it out. And for some unknown reason, I continue to be using %4.0f instead of just %4d for an integer value. I mean, it still works. It just seems like unnecessary typing. One more point that I want to make, I emphasize this to my students. Indexing can be tough for people, and this code is a little bit difficult to read and certainly maybe gets more difficult to read when you start combining it all together like this right here. So often what I recommend doing, if it's not too much of a burden in terms of memory usage, is to just create new variables. Let's get a heights variable and set it equal to the applicants all rows column one. And let's get an ages variable and let's set it equal to applicants all rows column two. And then instead of using these harder to read uh, indexings in the middle of these logical operations, let's just say heights and ages. I messed that up. Let me try that again. Let's just say heights right there. And let's just say ages right here and let's just say ages right here. Heck, you could probably fit it more easily on one line like this. And I think it's at least easier to read. So I recommend doing something like that. Just extract out your columns. If it's again, you know, not too much of a memory burden or you're not too worried about efficiency. It's extra good for readability, I think. So could be a good thing to do. And that's all I'm gonna do for this video. We'll have another example in the next one.